Hey guys, and welcome back to a new tutorial series. So I'm just filming a quick intro here to explain to you guys how this series is going to work and what we're going to be doing. So essentially, this is online game development with Python, which means we're going to be using sockets and networking to connect what's known as a client and a server or multiple clients to a server where they can send and share information. And therefore, we can create an online game. So we're going to start off with just the absolute basics and just get shapes. For example, like if I move a shape on my computer, um, it moves a shape on your computer, like if you're the other client. And then we'll start getting into some more advanced stuff where we create a legitimate game and start sending mass amounts of information to the server and back to the client. And I'm expecting this series to be, I want to say like 10 to 15 videos long. I don't really have it completely planned out as of filming this intro. Uh, but if there is any feedback that you guys have for me while we go through, if there's anything you want to see, please make sure you let me know. So essentially what we're going to do today uh, in this first video is I'm just going to show you guys uh, how we can create like a very basic client and then in the next video we'll go to a server and then we'll connect those client and server together and then we'll start moving into more advanced things um, like how we can get the game running on multiple machines and all of that. So we'll start uh, really simply by just getting everything working on our local network and then once it's working on our local network we'll deploy that to an external server which will allow us to play from anywhere in the world not just against people on our local network. So I'm just going to quickly get into this video where I'm going to show you guys an example of what an online game looks like with Python. It's something that I've personally created and then we'll get into writing a bit of code and in the next videos we'll do most of the uh, serious coding. Okay, so what I'm showing you right now is actually an online game that I created with Python, Pygame, and networking. And this is similar to something we're going to make, obviously not as advanced, uh, but it works on the same principles. So essentially, I have what is known as two clients. Now, if you don't know, the way that any online game works is we have multiple clients connecting to one main location, which is known as a server. Now, right here on my screen, we have two clients. So this client on the left that my mouse is kind of going over that has this red uh, highlight, like where the rook is or where I just am about to move this knight, is client one. And then this black one over here, so like you are black, uh, where I just moved this pawn is client two. Now you can see in the background, I have this command line thing going and it's sending and receiving information. And this is essentially how a online game works. And you might see uh, whenever you guys play an online game, it says waiting for server or connecting to server. And that's because it's doing exactly that. It's waiting to get a connection to the server and then grab information from that. So that's the way that we're going to be doing things is using a client and server. Now, I'm not going to be using any frameworks that are pre-created like uh, I know there's like Twisted and some other frameworks for Python. The only module we're going to be using that's external is Pygame, and that's just to create some very basic graphics. Uh, okay, so let's close this. I just want to give you guys an example of what an online game looks like. And you can see when I was moving something on one client, it would move it on the other. So let's close that up. Uh, and let's actually get started with the tutorial. Oh, did not mean to open that. So I'm going to be working with PyCharm uh, for this tutorial. Now, if you don't know what PyCharm is, it's an IDE. Uh, to download it, all you have to do is just go to the internet, type PyCharm, and you can go here and click download whenever it loads up. Now, if you guys don't want to use PyCharm, that's absolutely fine. You can do everything using the standard editor like IDLE. You could use Atom. You can use whatever you want. Um, but if you want to follow exactly with the tutorial, I'm going to be using PyCharm. Now, the next thing we're going to need um, other than IDE, I guess you don't need PyCharm, is we're going to have to install Pygame. Now, for 90% of you, the way that you're going to be able to install Pygame is just by going to command prompt, uh, loading it up like this, and just typing pip install Pygame, and then hitting enter. Now, uh, if this doesn't work for you, I'll put a card in the top right hand corner of the screen right now, which tells you where you can go to install Pygame. Uh, and I have a video explaining you exactly how to do this. And if this command doesn't work for you, you can follow that video and I'll explain to you how to do that. So once we have Pygame, then we're ready to actually start writing a bit of code. So while I launch up PyCharm right here and create a new project, uh, let me just tell you about I don't know, some of the things we'll be going through in this tutorial series. So obviously we're gonna be working on coding both a client and a server, and I'm gonna explain obviously exactly how those things work uh, and how we can create them. And then what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be dealing with a bit of uh, server like administration, if you wanna say that. So actually deploying things to an external server, um, installing, installing dependencies, uh, working with like a Linux server 
to deploy our game to. And that'll be at the end of the series that we do that. Right now, we're just gonna be working with what's known as local host, which means that we're just gonna be doing it on our own network. So right now, the games that we create are only going to work on our, uh, what do you call it, against people that are on our Wi-Fi or on the same network as us. And then later, it'll work against anyone in the world that has uh, that client downloaded. Okay, so let's just create a new project here. My new project, I'm just gonna say is tutorial, uh, let's say network tutorial one or something. Uh, and just as a, what do you call it here? Just letting you guys know, I did actually mess up my thumb a little bit. It's kind of swollen. So if my typing is not the best, that is actually my excuse for that. So now that I've got a new project open, I'm just going to create a new Python file. Let's just call this tutorial one. Actually, let's call this client. Okay. And just save that as okay. Cause that's all we're going to be coding in this video. It's just a very basic client. Uh, okay. So now we've got client. So what I'm going to start off by doing is creating a configuration for my client and keep in mind, if you guys are using something else, you don't have to worry about what I'm doing with this PyCharm specifics. This is just the way you have to set up a project in uh, PyCharm. So I'm just going to set a client. I'm going to go to script path, network game, client. Okay. Apply. Okay. Now, quick side note, all of the code that I'm about to write is available on my website, techwithtim.net. Usually I have, as well as that, a text-based tutorial version. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to write the text-based tutorial while um, this first tutorial is out, but you will see it on there at some point, import tutorial, import Pygame. Uh, but yeah, all the code will be available on there in case you guys miss something or something's not working. So we're just going to start by importing Pygame and make sure that that's working. Once that's working, we're going to create a window. So to do that, we'll just say win equals Pygame. Uh, dot display dot update or what am I saying pi game dot display dot set underscore capture set underscore mode wow a bit tired today guys and then in here we're just gonna type width and height and then we're gonna create these variables so we'll say width equals 500 height equals 500 okay so there we go with height win. And now we're just going to set up a few global variables that we're going to have to use after we create a caption. So let's just say pygame game dot display dot set underscore caption. And then here we'll just give it a caption. Let's just say clients. Okay. All right. So now let's set up a global variable that we're going to use. And what we're going to do for this global variable is it's going to hold um, the current like clients. So we're going to say like client number. And we'll just start by making that zero, but we're going to increment that based on like once we connect to the server, which we'll do later. Okay. So now that we've done that, uh, there's a few basic things. And this is just what we always do for like a pie game project or whatnot. We're just going to define redraw window. Okay. And in here, all we're going to do is just pie game dot display dot update like that. And we'll also fill the display before we do that. Oops. Didn't mean to do that. Uh, with win dot fill. Uh, and we'll just pick a color. In this case, I want to do white. So we'll just do 255, 255, 255. Okay, now, yeah, I just realized this is actually going to be a lot harder to type than I thought because of my thumb. So just excuse me, guys, if I'm making a few mistakes here. Okay, so we got our redraw window now. And what we can do next is we can um, code our main loop. So I'm going to say define main. And in here, I'm just going to create a game loop, and this is going to run continuously while our program is going. And it's just going to be what's checking for collision, checking for events, can constantly asking the server for information. And you guys will see how this works in later videos more. So we're going to say run equals true. And in here, we'll say while well run. And we'll just set up some very basic things that we always do for Pygame. So for event in Pygame.event.get. Okay. And then all we're going to do is say if event.type equals equals pygame dot quit with all capitals then we'll simply do pygame dot quit like that uh don't need a semicolon and i guess we can say run equals false as well okay uh for events that looks good and then what else we'll do in here is we'll just call that redraw window function so redraw window like that now what i'm thinking we should do next is probably set up a class for our character okay now our character is going to be just the only object we're working with right now and it's just going to represent like a rectangle that moves like left down up right uh, around our screen and i guess we'll do that all in this video moving that character around and then we'll connect it to uh the server in the next one so let's create a class and we'll do that up here and we'll say class player 
uh, like that, okay? So we'll give it a, a knit function. And if you guys don't know much about object-oriented program and programming and you wanna learn, I do have a tutorial series on my channel um, that I would recommend you go through if you don't understand a lot of the stuff that I'm doing right now, okay? So x, y with height will be what we get in here. And this is just gonna represent, actually, let's give it a color as well, because that'll be good to have. x, y with height color. And yeah, this will just represent kind of our player and what variables they're gonna have. So we'll pass these values in when we create a new player. So self.y equals y. This is very straightforward. Self.width equals width. And self.height equals height. And finally, self.color equals color. So these are just our initialization here. Uh, this is what we're gonna use when we're drawing the character, when we're checking for a collision or stuff like that. Um, and what I'm also gonna do to just save us a bit of time in the future, is I'm gonna say self.rect equals, and then in here, let's do this, okay? So x, y, width, height, like that, okay? And this will just make it a bit faster when we're trying to draw our character. So the next thing we're gonna need is to find draw. Now in the draw method here, we're gonna take a window, so we'll call that win. And all we're going to do is just draw a rectangle that represents our character onto the screen. Uh, and it'll obviously be the appropriate color. So to do that, all we have to do is just say win dot. Oh, no, we don't have to do that. We have to do pi game dot draw dot rect standing for rectangle. We have to first give the window. So we'll give win. We need the color. So we'll do self dot color. And then we need a rect, which will be self dot rect. OK, and that's actually all we need to do to draw the rectangle to the screen. Now we need one more method we're gonna use and this is gonna be called move. And move actually, I believe, yeah, we don't need to do anything else in there right now uh, as a argument, sorry. So for move, what this is gonna do is it's essentially just gonna check, um, what do you call it? If they press like left key, right key, whatnot, how can we move them around the screen? So the way that we can do this really basically essentially is just do pi game dot uh, what do you call it dot keys dot get underscore pressed I believe that's it it might be key mm, might be keys we'll see we'll see if, which one works so this is essentially going to give us a list of all of the keys um, actually a dictionary of all of the keys and essentially each key is going to have a value of either zero or one now if one is true that means we're currently pressing the key if zero is uh, there then it means we're not pressing the key so the way that this is useful as opposed to doing what we could sometimes do, which is just check for events in here, is if you're pressing more than one key at once, it'll allow you to move like diagonally or whatnot, okay? So what we can do in here now is we can just check if certain keys are pressed and then change the X and Y values accordingly. So we'll say if, um, what do you call it? Oh, I guess we should probably put this in a variable list. We'll say keys equals pygame dot. Maybe, I feel like it's key. We're gonna go key for right now. Pygame.key.get underscore press. So we'll say if keys and then pygame.k underscore left standing for our left arrow key. And that's all we need to do for that one. And then we'll say if keys and then pygame.k underscore, is this, should this be all capitals? I think it should be. Uh, K underscore right. And then the next one, if keys, pi game dot k underscore up and then our last one obviously is down and then we'll change our values accordingly inside of these if statements so pi game dot k underscore down okay so left right up down so if we press the left arrow key obviously what we have to do is subtract from our x value so to do that we'll just say self dot x minus equals self dot vel now Val is something we need to define. So let's do that up here. Self dot val equals, and let's do a value of like three for right now. Okay, so if we're going right, we need to add to our x. So we'll do this very similar. So self dot x plus plus equals self dot val. Okay, if I could type that correctly. And then to go up, we're gonna subtract from our y value. So self dot y minus equals self dot val. And to go down, we'll do self dot y plus equals self dot val. And that's the way the coordinate system works in Pygame. Our coordinates actually at the top left hand of our player or our screen. So if we want to go down, we have to add to it. And then left and right is the same in terms of subtracting and adding. Okay, so that should successfully move our player. Uh, we could add like a jump and stuff in here another time. But for right now, that's all we need. I'm trying to think of anything else that we could do right now. Um, we should probably create a player object and draw that to the screen just to make sure everything's working. So to do that, let's create a player. Um, should we do it up here? Let's do it right above our main loop here, okay? So we're just gonna say, or actually we'll do it inside the main loop. This will work better. 
we'll say uh, P standing for player just equals player and then we'll give it some values in X Y with height color so for X Y we'll just start them at like 50 50 and then for our width let's just do 100 by 100 so he's nice and big and we can see him and then we'll do a color of green so that would be red green blue like that so 255 for green and then what we're gonna do, do actually is we're gonna type in here insert in redraw window we're just gonna pass P to our uh, redraw window so that we can draw him and before we do that we'll call P dot move and what this will do is move our character based on what keys we're pressing so uh, inside redraw window let's add a player um, what do you call it argument attribute whatever you want to call that um, sorry parameter that's the correct name and then we'll just say player dot draw like that and we'll pass win in here which probably should be passed in here as well because we do use win quite a bit so let's do p let's do win and then p okay so let's run this now and see if i made any mistakes i likely did uh, process finished oh we are never calling the main function so let's call this main function from down here so we're actually executing that code that we wrote and there we go so now we have a little green square and you can see hmm interesting it's not working for me to move this around uh, so let's check this one more time p dot move what is move doing get pressed let's just add I want to add something here and make sure this is working so let's we're gonna say clock equals pi game dot time dot clock okay and then in here we're just gonna do clock dot tick uh, and we'll do 60 FPS I just want to see if this is working if not I do know how to fix this um, okay so we're not able to actually move this oh I know why so very interesting we are not updating this rect but we are updating um, <laughs> what do you call it like up down left right so at the bottom here all we're gonna do is just redefine our rect by doing self dot X self dot y self dot width and self dot height now i'll really ex quickly explain why this error was happening essentially we're defining rect up here based on the input parameters when we're creating our player so that means we're always just constantly drawing our rectangle in the same position because we're never updating this rect variable we're only updating like x y width height right so we just have to redefine our rect variable every single time that we're moving which is fine and we can do that so now let's see and we can move our green square around the screen. I actually quite like the speed of this movement. Um, so yeah, so essentially in the next video, what we're going to be doing is I'm wrapping it up here is we'll add an, a little bit more to this client and then we'll start working with sockets so we can connect this up to a server and we'll start talking about all the networking aspecting then. So if you guys enjoyed the video and are you excited for the next one, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you again in the next video.